Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video we are doing a channel update, an update of what's going on on my channel. Uh, I promised that I would do these about once a month. I think it's been about a month since I did my last one. So we should be doing okay. Uh, okay, first of all, I have sold a ton of stuff on eBay. If you are interested in 15 millimeter World War II, 15 millimeter Ancients, Romans, Carthaginians, Macedonians, even English Knights. If you're interested in 20 millimeter World War II, if you're interested in what else am I selling on there? Micro armor. I've got a ton, ton of micro armor on there. Check that out. I've got some. World War II naval ships on there. I've, I've got some fantasy figures on there. Yeah, so if, you, uh, if you're interested in any of those things, check out my uh, eBay. I've got a ton of stuff on there, and I appreciate if you guys want to pick those up. You, you know, that's the scale you're doing, or that's the era that you want. Most of them are painted, so go, go pick those up. Now, having said that, I have sold a lot of stuff on eBay. I've sold um, a few armies, actually, on eBay. And by doing that, that has given me a little extra spending cash. And if you've noticed, i got a bunch of things laid out in front of me of things that I just recently bought. Now, all of this has been done this month, pretty much, I think. Everything here has been done in just one month. Uh, I got my German Grenadiers. I did a live stream of me assembling and painting these. Uh, I did that over the course of like five nights, uh, a couple hours every night. If you want to watch those streams, you can, but I understand that that's a lot of viewing. Uh, you can kind of fast forward or do whatever you want to do. Uh, just go to the, each different part. But I have painted up uh, 30 German Grenadiers on there. Um, I did them as late war. Uh, these are late war Grenadiers. Um, I originally painted these up as Normandy Grenadiers. So, uh, yeah, because what era in World War II do I like to play? Normandy and Market Garden, and, or, yeah, Normandy, Market Garden, Battle of the Bulge. Those are the three that I really enjoy the most. So I, made, I painted these guys up like Normans, no, Normandy Germans. Okay, so check that video out. Uh, I also did U.S. Airborne. I, I, I'm going to tell you, these guys aren't finished. And dang, i got a lot of stuff still left in the box. I'm going to tell you. I, I probably only used half the stuff because they give you a ton of stuff in these boxes. Okay, uh, I have not used the decals yet. I painted them. They're complete. They're one, They're. 99% finished being painted. The only thing I need to do is maybe go up and touch up some details, like a chin strap or something. But there, or maybe the white stripe on the back of the helmet, or maybe dry brushing the netting on the helmet. Those are like the only things I got left to do on these guys. On day two, I video, I, I've been videotaping it, editing it, and then uploading it. Day one, no problem, without a hitch. Day two, there, there was an error with the video, so I had to go back in and re-video. But guess what? They were already, I had already finished day two painting when I had to go back in and redo it. So what I had to do was just explain what I had done and how I got to that point. That was disappointing. Day three, same thing happened. I pretty much finished the models. My, my OBS, what I'm using to stream, what I'm using to record this right now, glitched out, caused an error with the video. I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm completely disappointed. And I think it was because I was using that 64-bit version of OBS. In this video right here, I'm recording it in a 32-bit. Uh, my computer 64-bit, but uh, it says if you have any problems with 64, be sure to use the 32. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using the 32, unfortunately. Okay, so these guys are done. I flocked them using snow. Okay, now I, when, I, when it dried and I shook off all the snow, it wasn't a complete coverage. It, it was just 
uh, disappointing. It was like 50-50 on the snow. You could see through the snow is what I was saying. So what did I do? I went, I grabbed a couple of models here, and I've actually got them drawing right here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, these guys are with straight Elmers out of the bottle on the base snow from Woodland Scenics, right? Base. These three here, I'm experimenting, see? These three right here, I'm going to use the watered-down version a second time because it goes on a lot easier. I'm going to use the watered-down version and then drop the snow on them. Uh, and I think that, what because the original snow was done with a watered-down version, uh, so that's why I went with a full Elmer's on these guys. And then I figured because it was a second layer, maybe watered-down version would be enough. So I'm testing it. If the watered-down version is different than the full Elmer's, then I'm just going to use the full Elmer's on the remainders. If they are the same, then I'm going to go back and do a second coat of watered-down. Simple. Okay. So, but they are looking good. I mean, I wish I wish they could. I uh, wish you could see them. Them. They are look. They look really good. Um, I didn't do. When I get the flock finished, I'll be making a final video for them, just showing off the finished product. Okay, that's the U.S. Airborne. Sticking with the bolt action theme, as you know, I have gone. I have uh, started selling a lot of my uh, miniatures, and I've. And rule sets, and I'm kind of going towards the whole bolt action thing. I've pretty much started building terrain and models and everything else for the 28 millimeter version of bolt action. I was thinking about doing it in 20 millimeter. I've got a ton of 20 millimeter stuff. I'm excited to, to have a project to do, and the 28 millimeter is giving me direction like go towards the 28 millimeter light and off in the distance. I see the 28 millimeter light. I'm going. Okay, so, so I've committed 100%. 100%. I'm switching to 28 millimeter across the board with all my games. Every game. Sci-fi, fantasy, ancients, American War of Independence, World War II, D&D. &D. It's all 28 millimeter. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to uh, have micro armor for certain games. 15 millimeter for another game, 15 millimeter for another game, 20 millimeter, 28 millimeter. Fuck it. I'm going 28. Okay, what does that what does that mean? Well, it means I gotta buy a bunch of stuff. I gotta reinvest in 28 millimeter, which honestly that sucks. But it's okay. Because by selling all my other stuff, that's the money I'm using to get into the 28s. Uh, I've noticed that the bolt action rules and all their other rules that we're going to talk about in just a minute don't need a whole lot of figures. Like my. Okay, just use this as an example. My Battlefront game. Now, I was going to say Spearhead. Battlefront. How many 15 millimeter figures did I have? I probably had 10. Thousand. Okay, let me let me figure this out. Yeah, okay. Oh, probably about four thousand models. Four thousand. <laughs> I look back on it and I say, "How the fuck did I do all that? How did I paint all that? How did I put all that together?" I got a garage full of models. I mean, I've got an addiction. I got a problem. So, <laughs> so, by taking my Battleground models, selling them, right? And I'm selling them pennies on the dollar, okay? So, you could, you could get probably 100 models for $10, okay? So, that's what I'm saying. On my eBay, I've been just unloading it. Uh, and, and it's mainly because it's emptying tubs of figures and... It's getting rid of all my pewter that I've got. I've got some blank, unfinished, unprimed, un everything pewter just in bags, dumping it. Why? It's been there for years. I haven't touched it, right? So, getting rid of that. 
Uh, and back up. So, but I look at bolt action as an example. What do I need? I need what? Maybe 50 models? Really? For a whole army? That's a lot, actually. My, my Germans, I got 30 models. No, my Americans. My American paratroopers, I got 30 models. And it wound up being like 700 points. So if I do a 1,500-point game, I throw a tank in there, maybe a truck, a Jeep, maybe an anti-tank gun, 50 models, and I'll have a 1,500-point army. So now, am I going to stop there? No. Why? Because i got to have it all. You know, do I have, do I, I, I got to have a Sherman, but then again, I got to have an M10. I've got to have an M18. I got to have a Stewart. I got to have a truck. I got to have a Jeep. You know, I got to have a 37, a 57, a 76. I got to have, I got to have a little bit of everything. I can't just have, I just can't have a 1500 point army and leave it at that. Why? Because I play scenarios. And we're going to get into that in a minute because here's my scenario books. But I play scenarios, and because I play scenarios, one scenario might say you got to have a Jeep. The next scenario might say i got to have a truck. The next scenario might say I have a, I need an M5. The next scenario says I might have an, I need an M7 Priest or something. Right? So because of that, I look at the scenario. It says, you need all this. If I don't have it, I go get it. And what happens is, I'm gradually building up my collection. But will it look like Battlefront with 4,000 models? No. No. Even if I got one of every tank, it would be less than what I have in Battlefront. In Battlefront, I had 12 Shermans. I, I think I had like... 16 Panzer IVs. I'm just looking over my collection. I think I have like, yeah, maybe like three Panthers and three Tiger ones. But still, I'm not going to need 16 Panzer IVs in bolt action. Never, never going to need that. One, two, maybe three, possibly. If I was playing the tanks module for uh, I'm sorry, Armored Warfare, whatever they call it, for bolt action, yeah, okay, maybe I might need like 10 tanks. But they're all going to be different. And, you know, they're not going to be the exact same tank. And But that's n I, none of my scenarios ever call for more than three or four, maybe five tanks. Because all the scenarios that I play are infantry-based with tanks thrown in a support. So... So even by even by going to bolt action, what I need is going to be reduced. So I don't I won't need like okay. Same thing with Flames of War. I'm gonna back up. Flames of War. I play that. I used to play that. I switched to Battleground or Battlefront. I, I switched, switched to Battlefront because Flames of War rules were a little bit you know. So it, it, Flames of War reminded me of Warhammer 40k. And, or, yeah, Warhammer 40k, and, eh, okay, so, so let's talk about Flames of War. When I sit down with a company of infantry, how many models is that, 120 models? You don't see that in bolt action. Even if I, even if I wanted a company, I wouldn't have 120 models out there. I'd probably have two platoons of maybe... 20 or 30 models each, company commander and some support elements. Uh, in Flames of War, you got to have like five tanks, 120 infantry. Surely it costs less per model, but you just need so many models. And yeah, by getting rid of my, I'm getting rid of it, switching to 28s, less models, faster gameplay. Bigger models, which means they're more beautiful. If you're a good painter, and I think I am, I think I'm, I think I'm a decent painter. I don't think, it, on a scale of like 1 to 10, I think I'm around a 7. And so, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe a 7. 
you know, so if, if, if that's true, I, I'm happy to put models on the table that are painted at 70%. What else did I get? I, I went on a tangent. I was trying to show you all the things that I got. I got a tank. Now, why did, and, and I looked around the internet, I looked at all the different shops, not all the different shops, but I, I, I looked at a bunch of shops. I even searched on eBay because maybe somebody was selling something cheap. On Hobby Link, okay, Google it. Hobby Link. I might put the link down here for Hobby Link. Hobby Link is a great resource for model kits as well as terrain making supplies. If you are trying, if you need some balsa wood, they've got it. If you need some glue, they've got it. If you need uh, some Warlord Games miniatures, they have them. If Not all of them, some of them. If you need some Pegasus models, they've got them. If you need some Perry miniatures, they have them. If you need, I don't think they have Victrix. But they have, uh, they, have a, they have a really good, I think, I'm just thinking this out loud, I think their primary focus is model trains, but a lot of this, but they carry a little bit of everything. Their hobby, everything. Now, do they have games? No. They just have models and terrain building stuff. They had a Tiger One. Tiger One, Italeri, 156 scale, which is also 28 millimeter. It says right here, 156, 28 millimeter. And then right underneath Italeri, it says Warlord Games of Tiger One. Easy assembly, seventeen dollars. <laughs> wow. Okay. I put it together. It's right here. I ha have I done anything with it yet? No. You can tell it's it's only primed. That's all it is. It's just I just primed it. Primed it like a desert sand color. And once it gets painted and everything, I'll show you guys that. Uh, I did a video reviewing the model. Check it out. Why did I get that? Well, I didn't have any 28 millimeter vehicles. Also, I, that's what I was doing. I was looking for a cheap vehicle, in, and it, I didn't care which one it was. It could have been Russian. It could have been Polish. It could have been whatever. It could have been a truck, a Jeep, whatever. I was looking for a, an inexpensive vehicle for scale purposes. What I did was I got this model, and now I realize how big my roads need to be, how big my bridge needs to be. I've got a bridge, I don't know what I did with it, that I, I did a whole river thing for, and I did the little uh, bridge area for it. And this vehicle is wider than the bridge, because that bridge was designed for 20, 20 millimeter and not 28 millimeter. So, I need to build some roads and that's what I wanted to know I want when I got this the, the main reason why I got well first of all I can put it in my army and we can use it that's that's that was also an incentive but my thought process was get this so I can test it on roads so now what I plan to do Hobby Lobby or Hobby Link sells plywood or balsa wood. I don't think you'd want to use balsa wood because uh, once you start putting the glue on it and stuff, it'll warp. Uh, but because it's too big of a piece. This is a 4 inch wide by 12 inch long piece. Uh, I could make, I could get a ton of these and these are only buck fifty. I could get a ton of these and make roads on these uh, and I can uh, I can texture them. I can put grass on them. I can do whatever, and my tiger tank's gonna fit pretty darn good on that road. Okay, and if I make it like that, and tiger tank should be a should be another reason why I thought I would get the tiger was this should be one of the widest tanks in the war. I don't think there's really anything wider than the tiger one. So. I mean, I'd have to look at it. I don't, I'm sure the mouse is probably bigger, but am I ever going to use that? No. Okay, so, so yeah, so if I get some, and, and with the table being 4 by 6 and if I get some with at an angle and stuff like that, I probably won't need more than about 8 of those, you know, maybe 9, 
eight or nine of those, and I'm going to be able to make intersections, uh, and then I'll just need to make some, I can still use the same river I made, I'll just have to adjust the bridge area. Okay, so, got that, that's part of my philosophy, that's coming up this month probably, is making some of these roads. Okay, so, this last month we've got the paratroopers, the grenadiers, the tank, now, move, moving on, okay. Just recently, um, oh, well, we won't talk about this. Let's talk about this, because we're going to stay with bolt action. Okay, I just recently finished a project that I had where I was making half-timbered houses, okay? These are modular half-timbered houses where the roof comes off, you can put models inside, the this comes off, you can put more models inside here, right? So, you got the interiors. You got windows, you got a door, that goes on there, no problem, it's right, it sits right there, looks good on the table, you've got your half timber roof, goes on there, boom, you got a two story building. The reason why I made the modular was, I have these tubs, you can probably see one right here. If I built it like this, like I did the church, it won't fit in the tub. So I wanted to make sure if I took the roof off, like I want to take the whole side of the roof off with it. So now this will fit in the tub. But I also made it modular so that if I took a third one, I could put a third one and make it a three-story building. Hell, I could put a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. I could just stack these up and have the skyscraper. But uh, Or I could even go as far back as saying, there, just have one. Got a half-timbered house out in the out on the battlefield. This And guess what? This half-timbered house serves in the Middle Ages, American War of Independence. Uh, probably not so much because it seems like it's a European-type house, but you never know. Uh, it could be an, and it could be an American house. Just, I just say it is. Or it could be World War II. Hell, I can make it d and I can use this in Dungeons & Dragons if I wanted to. You know, so, so these are like super modular, super versatile. I did a whole video series on that. Check it out. Okay. Um, so I did that this month. And why? Because I didn't have any 28mm buildings. And it, I had to have some. Because if you, you know, I had to have some 28 millimeter buildings for some scenarios. And I thought I needed row houses, when in fact I just need a bunch of houses. Okay, so, and I did four sets of those, so I could actually, you can put them side by side. You could have four two-story row houses, but um, I really need to make probably another four of them. And that way, if I get a big battlefield in an urban environment or whatever, I can throw some of them out there. I want to make some bigger ones. Uh, I realized a couple of months ago I made that church in 20 millimeter. You know, this guy right here, you probably he's off camera. Um, he'll actually work for 20 for 28s, <coughs> but instead of being able to put four guys in the tower, I can only put two. And all I got to do on the doors and windows is expand them a little bit. And they will, it'll be perfectly fine for a 28 millimeter. But, uh, but I want to redo the church to make it even more grandiose. I want it to be a 28 millimeter boom. You know, that's what I want. But that'll be down the road. That's not, that's not next. Uh, the roads are probably next. Okay. So then I got some more figures in just recently. Haven't had a chance to touch them. Uh, I've done videos on opening the boxes, but. Uh, I've got Hail Caesar, the rules right here. I got Hail Caesar uh, because I have some ancient figures, but I want to do it in 28 millimeter. I've always been inspired by this era, this period of warfare, the uh, swords and shields, Middle Ages, the uh, ancient period, the Romans in their formations against the maybe some barbarian Celts or whatever, also the uh, Macedonian phalanxes and that whole era because it's, it seemed like that's when warfare was young, right? The ancient period, 
people really didn't know what they were doing, honestly. They were just grabbing an axe and a shield, running out there and acting like a madman and attacking each other. Well, the Romans had like a professional army where they trained their soldiers. And then the Macedonians also had trained soldiers. And they, were, they probably had trained soldiers before the Romans. But every nation that started to develop a, a way to fight did it differently. So they didn't have any, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have any books to go off of like, hey, how did this other country do it? No. They said, let's do it this way because it works. And then each nation had their own fighting style and techniques. And that I find to be fascinating. When you start getting into the Middle Ages, you start to lose that uniqueness. It's pretty much everybody's fighting the same. Uh, but it's still fun. That's still, that's still an era. I, lo I love the knights in shining armor and all that stuff. So, so I am going to be working towards a couple of armies in Hail Caesar, and we'll see how that fares. Okay. Um, Macedonians is a, is a, is a is an era. The whole um, Greek Macedonian army is something I'm really excited about. But I'm also super excited about the Romans. Uh, but when you start talking, I thought I was going to do Republican Romans, but I think I'm going to do Imperial Romans. I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to switch to Imperial. I don't have any Romans right. Well, actually, I've got a couple of Romans right here. But I don't think I'm going to go Republican Romans, even though the Republican Romans are really cool because you got the Principes, the Hastati, the Triarii, you know, the Velites, you know, all of that is kind of a cool thing for me. Those are all unique types of units I like. When you start getting into the Ro Roman legionaries, it's cookie cutter. They're all the same, you know, and I don't know if I want to do all the same. That's one reason why I got into Napoleonics is because they're all different. So I'll have to think about that, okay? And when I get ready to, I will... Do a, once I get like these rules read and understood, that's the problem right there. When I get these read and understood, I will do a review on these. Right now I don't have a review, but probably this month you'll see me do a review on this uh, set of rules. And uh, when, right now on Warlord, you had a, uh, I got this directly from Warlord Games because there, this book was sold out in a lot of different places. Okay, and I like to order straight from the States because shipping is usually faster. But it was incredibly fast from the UK to the US. I was super impressed through Warlord Games. I ordered this. I got it in about one week. That's right. I got it in one week. Um, now, when they had it, they had it, but they also don't have it. When you go to their website, it says that the rule book sold out. But... If you look right next to that, there's another entry right next to it. It says, you can get the rule book and a box of figures for the cost of a rule book. It was like $48. And I was like, well, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> so, so what I did was I picked up the Macedonian Phalangites. This is like a $28 box set, right? You get 40 guys for $28. That's the, about the same cost as my 15 millimeter miniatures. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's like super no-brainer. So, and these models actually come with the pikes. Where my 15 millimeters, I had to go out and buy pikes separately. So this was actually an awesome deal. They're all this kind of the same model, though, unfortunately. There's only like four poses, six poses, four, four poses or something like that. Um, and they come with decals. I don't have to buy those separately. So, so um, Warlord Games, keep it up. This is an awesome deal. I got both of these for 28, 28 bucks. 48 bucks. 28 bucks. 48 bucks. <laughs> I don't remember. 48 seems right. 48 seems right. But if, if this is 28, then this would have only cost me 20 bucks, which I was totally okay with that. You get the rule book and the box of figs for the cost of a rule book. Done it. These are this is like probably my next project actually. This or or this. But we'll get into that here in just a moment. Let me set that off to the side. Okay, hail Caesar. Uh, there. 
the cool thing about Hail Caesar is a, it's very similar to this set of rules called black powder. The rules are the same, okay? They're just set in a different era. Now, how could that be? You're saying, Mr. Everything, how could black powder and Hail Caesar be the same? Well, um, units are given values, and those values interact with each other. So you can take any unit from any era, except for maybe World War II because of the individual nature of the battlefield. But when you have formations of units, black powder is formations of units, guys standing shoulder to shoulder. Hail Caesar, you got guys standing shoulder to shoulder. Uh, that goes all the way up to the Middle Ages, maybe even a little bit past the Middle Ages. This goes all the way through, I don't know, French and Indian War, all the way up to Crimean War. All those, all you got to do is assign them a melee value. You got to assign them a, uh, a missile value and a hit points. You know, it's pretty much, and, and the way you move around, they didn't have radios, not like World War II. So they, they had to rely on messengers. All of these are very similar. Now, there are some changes between Hail Caesar and Black Powder, and I'll try to do a little comparison during those videos to kind of give you an idea and give me an idea of what the main differences are. But Black Powder and Hail Caesar are almost identical. The rules concepting is the same. Okay, does it look like I've done a commitment to Warlord games? It certainly does, man. I, I'm, I've jumped into Warlord games like crazy. Okay, but we're still talking about Hail Caesar. With Hail Caesar, with the rule book, I actually got a free model. Um, this, not just not just the Macedonians. I think this normally came with the rule book, and so uh, it's the cover art. I want to put that away. The guy that's on the cover right here, this Roman legionary, they gave me a miniature of him. Okay, so I've got that figure in miniature form. Sweet, love it. Okay, what else did I get? I got. Macedonian command stand. Uh, this is remember this is 40 guys, uh, and I just threw in three more, so that makes it an odd number. <laughs> so basically, three of those guys are getting pulled out, put in the shelf, because when I because if I'm doing a Macedonian army, I can't stop at just one unit of phalanges, right? So I don't know. Somehow I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to get another one of these, which means I'm gonna have six guys sitting off to the side. So the, con the idea is maybe make the unit a little bit smaller, uh, maybe 8 across and 4 deep instead of 10 across and 4 deep, and that way I'll have, if I get two boxes, I'll have three units, maybe, something, something like that. And that seems like a reasonable amount of phalangites. I think I need four units, actually, uh, for a... I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't think there's any army lists per se. Uh, I don't have the biblical book with the army lists in them, and I don't have the uh, the Caesar's era. What is it called? Age of Caesar book, which is kind of like scenarios. Uh, but I plan to get those this month. Uh, just FYI. Okay, so I got the Macedonian command specifically for the Macedonian phalanx, but I also picked up Alexander the Great. Right, got got to get Alexander and Philip. Those two guys came in this blister for my army. Got to have an army general, right? I figured, you know, pick it up. Now I got the command and Philip, I think, from Miniature Market, local. How long does it take me to get a figure from Miniature Market? Just under a week. So I was impressed when I got my stuff from the UK and almost exactly one week. All right. Back to bolt action. Sorry. I picked up a pack of Waffen SS. Uh, these guys, basically they have the same uniforms as my Grenadiers. Uh, so I can paint them up like the Grenadiers and just make them Grenadiers. They don't have to be SS. On the box of the Grenadiers, it says if you want to, you can paint these up as SS. Either way. But this comes with a sniper team, a bazooka team, well not a bazooka, a panzer shrek team, and a flamethrower. So I'm getting five figures in here. I think it's five. One of them's prone, and I get all kinds of coolness. 
We got a Panzer Shrek, a Sniper, and a Flamethrower. Super cool. So moving on to the next thing that I got was Black Powder. Uh, this video is going on a little bit, but I appreciate you guys coming out and checking out this video because uh, it kind of keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and what I've got planned over the next month. And if you're into this kind of stuff, you'll be excited. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a, a video on Black Powder. Uh, I already have a whole army painted, a whole scenario for Freeman's Farm. I've got all those figures. And I've, I've got probably twice as many of those figures still in plastic and pewter that hasn't been put together and painted. So, uh, if I like this game and I think it's really cool and it's faster and easier to play than my other game called Grenadier, then I'm going to start digging into this. Uh, Black Powder is a lot like Hail Caesar and we'll find out exactly what the differences on that are. Okay, now... I got Black Powder to play my American War of Independence. That was, that was my first thought. But then I realized that Black Powder can be played with Napoleonics. And I said, you know what? Uh, let me go ahead and get a box of Napoleonic, Napoleonic figures. Because I already have my American War of Independence figures on the wall. I keep pointing over there because that's the wall that they're on. Uh, so I don't need to get any American War of Independence figures. And all my Napoleonic figures that I have, I have enough figures to do Waterloo <laughs> in 15 millimeter. I have Prussians, Nassau, Hanovers, Brunswickers, King's German Legion, Br British, French, Dutch Belgians. I don't know. I, 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 got, I got a ton of the Prince of Orange, you know, Wellington. Napoleon, all that. I've got all of that for Battle of the Bulge. Battle of the Bulge. For Waterloo in 15 millimeter for a game called Napoleon's Battles. I could play Black Powder using my 15 millimeter. Those are all in those trays right there. I could play Black Powder using those, but I didn't want to do that. I'm switching to 15, I'm switching to 28s. That's what I was thinking to myself. So I went ahead and bought a box of these just to see what they're like, if I like them, if I want to put them together and paint them, or whatever. Um, it took me probably three years to paint all of those figures. And they're all not completely 100% painted. I still have a, a unit right there that's in white. <laughs> but they're the ghosts. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how the black powder works in Napoleonics. We'll definitely see how it works in American War of Independence. But, and I just did a review on these just moments ago, and I'll upload that probably before I upload this video. Keynote. Keynote I noticed. When I went through the Black Powder, because in the Black Powder rules, it has the scenario for Freeman's Farm. I have the miniatures to do Freeman's Farm. I could do other things too, but that was what I was going for. I said, let's build everything I need for Freeman's Farm, and then I'll expand from there. So I have Freeman's Farm and a lot of extra miniatures. So I said, hey, this is Freeman's Farm. I got, I got that already. Well, when, when, I opened, when I cracked open the book and looked at the Freeman's Farm and scenario in there, it's about a third more figures in Black Powder. So like my, my regiment might be 16 figures. In Black Powder, it's got to be 24. I might have a unit in... I might have a unit of lights that are 12 figures. And in Black Powder, surprisingly enough, it was also 12. So it was like the, the numbers weren't the same. I was like, what the hell is going on? Well, in the Black Powder Rules, it specifically says these numbers aren't actually historically accurate. Well, what the hell, dude? It says we only picked the models that we had available, and we made our units that way. Really? <laughs> I was like, okay. Where Grenadier, the models that I've got up there, was supposedly like a ratio of like 40 men was one model. So they did the math, they figured out how many guys a regiment had, divided it by 40-ish. I mean, yeah, it can't be exact, but it was close, and they made their models, their, their units, that size. So they actually tried. Black Powder, the guys at Warlord, they didn't even try. 
So I was upset about that. So I was like, man, well, whatever, you know, I, you know, I'll have to build a couple more bases and put all that stuff together. And I was, I was like pissed off, you know, so <laughs> not in a negative way, just in like, oh man, I got to put more models together. So then, but I said, you know, it's a pretty cool looking system. And because I'm doing American War of Independence pretty heavily, I grabbed Rebellion. Rebellion is their supplement of scenarios because I prefer, as you know, I prefer to do scenarios over point-based games. This is their scenario for uh, American War of Independence, you know, and gives you the, like, regimental units, special abilities, and stuff like that. Brandywine, and Hubberton, and Chatterton's Hill, and Bunker Hill, of course, you got that one. And I don't know what else. They talk about the commanders and stuff. So I thought this was a really good resource. And I'm gonna do a re I'm gonna do a, just a, a full book review on this one, uh, but in the beginning of this book, I don't think this was written by the same guys. Uh, this was River Horse. River Horse did this uh, for Warlord Games. Uh, River Horse, the guys at River Horse, says at the very beginning, I don't know what those guys were thinking. I don't know what those guys at Warlord were thinking. We don't have tables that big, cause that. That, okay, one reason why I picked Freeman's Farm was because it was a small battle. It, that's in, in Grenadier. I picked Freeman's Farm because it was a teeny battle. It had a couple of different divisions, and they fought, and it could happen on a smaller table. A 4x8 or something. 4x6 even, probably. In Black Powder, you need a 6x12 table to play Freeman's Farm. And I was saying, 6 by 12? Who's got a 6 by 12? I mean, I'm on a 5 by 9. That's pretty big. But I don't have a 6 by... This is a ping pong table, by the way. I don't have a, uh, a 6 by 12. I said, okay, now I was thinking at my local game store, they've got 4 by 6 tables. I could put 3 of them side by side. That would be a 6 by 12. So I was like, yeah, no problem. We can do that. We can push four, 3 of the tables together and it would just take up the entire game room. <laughs> Okay, but then when I started reading this game, or this module, this expansion, or scenario book for Black Powder, the guy inside said, ignore all that. <laughs> we have a reasonable number of figures. We try to design our scenarios with accurate numbers. We don't have 6x12 tables or space to play 6x12. That's too much area. We design our scenarios to be played on 4 by 8s And I was thinking, yes! And, his, and accurate numbers of figures. All right, yeah, score! So I need to go through this, kind of do a, I'm going to give that, just, just based on that, I'm giving a thumbs up. But I still haven't looked at the scenarios, and I don't know if anything's like really off kilter or out of whack or anything. So... I really don't know anything about this book, but I'm going to go through and look at it, okay? All right. And it's also printed in the traditional printed uh, European or British style paper, the A1 or whatever they call it. It's extra large. Like this is the U.S. style magazine size, 8.5 by 11. See that? It's, it's narrower but taller. Okay. But that's, that's British printing right there. Okay. Last thing. Skirmish campaigns. Skirmish campaigns. I currently have four of them. I actually have a ton more over there, but they're all aviation based. Like skirmish campaigns, Guadalcanal, or Midway, or something like that to play with. Well, now I'm selling all those too. I'm, I pretty much already sold all my uh, airplanes because I really don't get into the miniature airplanes. Uh, World War One, maybe. But the other eras, I didn't really... Whatever. Um, okay, so... Skirmish campaigns. These are based... These, this, if, if you don't have skirmish... If you play bolt action, and you don't have a skirmish campaign book, shame on you. Because these books are designed for man-to-man -man games, 
Okay, so if you have a, if you're moving around individual figures with one building being a building and a tree being a tree, a hedge being a hedge, and a, a tank being a tank, and a man being a man, and a machine gunner being a machine gunner, and whatever, skirmish campaigns is for you. I have four of them. I have the, the Red Devils of the Orn. Do you have any idea what unit this is focusing on? <laughs> the first airborne okay and the sixth airborne actually both i think uh but basically this is the um the canadian parachute battalion it's british six airborne division uh and the ninth parachute battalion uh yeah so it has the skirmish campaigns book isn't just scenarios this one has 12 scenarios and it's broken down into three campaigns the way the so if you're if you like British paratroopers, Normandy, this is it. There's a bunch of scenarios that uh, and the way they work is okay. Let me back up. Let's back up just a second. They have conversion charts right here. This is this is in all the books and it says what game you play how to take whatever numbers there are in the scenario book and convert it to your game that you play. You'll notice that none of these are bolt action. Why? Because these books are a little bit older. But if you go to their website, they have the new updated one, and bolt action is prominent on there. So I think bolt action is like right in here, because it's alphabetical. But I played Overlord, Operation Overlord. It's right there. I played the Face of Battle. It's right there. Didn't like Face of Battle. I played Battleground, as you know. It takes a million figures, but it's not really a man-to-man -man game, but they got the chart there anyway. Oh, Battleground. Battleground, sorry. Battleground, I did play Battleground, and that is a man-to-man -man game, and that's a lot older than out of business. That's easy 8 But they have Battlefront right there. Uh, Battlefront was... Uh, um, a game that's really based on platoons and not individual men. And the Ark of Fire. I tried the Ark of Fire. I didn't really like that game. It um, It's an abstract kind of movement game. There's no real measure. You don't ever measure any... You don't measure anything, really, in that game. So, I don't know. I didn't really like that. But Bolt Action, I'm digging. And they do have the conversion chart for Bolt Action. And what it means is, in the, in the scenarios, it says things like, that unit's a T2. And I go, what's a T2? Oh, veteran. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, they give you the they give you the overall map. This is all of them. All of them do this. They give you the overall map, where the scenarios are locating or located on the map, and how they relate to each other. And they tell you where they got all this information, that bibliography, where they basically drew their information from, how what kind of research they've done. That that's pretty awesome. And then here we go. These scenarios look a lot like old squad leader scenarios, if you ever remember that game. But uh, you got your map right here, right? Each square on these maps represent one foot square. And this is only two by three. So this is a two foot by three foot scenario. So I could play it on a small little table. And then right here gives you the historical background, mission rules, objectives, who needs to attack what. Over here, it kind of just shows you where everything's deployed, all the entry points, deployment zones, and then right here it gives you the organization table. So like one page is this. And you could photocopy that and give that to your German player, and then you could photocopy this and give this to your British players, right? And then right here, usually this is everything that you automatically get, and these things over here, usually you have to roll a d20 to determine an optional troop because this randomizes like what you get so every scenario every time you play the scenario it'll be different uh, sometimes it says you get nothing sometimes it says you get off table artillery sometimes it says you get a rifle team and what's funny is it says things like five riflemen with car 98 one team leader with car 98 okay enters from so and so okay so what is that? Well, that's one unit in bolt action. That's a that's a, a command die that you put in the bag, obviously. 
each one of these little groups is a command die. It's it seems like and it, it doesn't it might violate your army list like um, like when I look at the American ones I'm gonna that's the one I'm getting ready to jump to hero no nope, not heroes of this is heroes of Omaha and Panzer Lear then this one is combat jump Sicily with the 82nd and this is Normandy the first hours and this is what this is the one I plan to be playing here very soon possibly tonight actually. Uh, the very first scenario in the book I think we're going to do. Because um, it's small. It's super small. It's two squads against like uh, like three or four half squads of Germans. Okay. So, in this game, right, and I'm going to go to that first scenario because I, I noticed it violated uh, Night Escape is what it's called. Okay, Night Escape. The Germans, they've got this unit right here that's got one sergeant and three riflemen. Well, that's only four guys. There's no unit in bolt action that has only four guys. So what? Who cares? Just put the four guys out there and give them a die. You know? Okay. And that's what I was trying... Oh, wait. Campaigns. Okay. They have campaigns that if you've got a, a gaming group and you want to play like a series of bolt action games or something like that and tie them in all together, it says, play the night escape. Then... Play Easy Company, and then play Braycourt Manor, and then play Attack on St. Marie, and then play Howl Force. Well, not Howl Force. If you're playing this campaign, then end. If you're playing this campaign, then play Howl Force. Yeah, so they've got these little, they've got this chain, like a flowchart, of which scenarios to play. And sometimes, uh, some of the books have campaigns that have, like, if you play a game, if you win, play this scenario. If you lose, play this scenario. I think that's pretty cool. And then each one of these scenarios, they give you like a historical why it took place, how it took place. And then, uh, yeah. Now, I've played a lot of games from uh, this, this book, and they've all been fun as hell. Okay, I'll just have to say that. Are they completely balanced? No. Scenarios usually aren't balanced, but the victory conditions uh, might, like, you might have a German unit that's outnumbered three to one, but their objective is to hold them off for six turns. It's not to defeat them, it's just to stop them, or, or to delay them, or something like that. So, yeah, the, the, the forces aren't necessarily equal. Like in bolt action, if you play a, a, the traditional game of bolt action, it's like, you have 1,500 points, I have 1,500 points. You line your guys up on that side of the table, I line my guys up on this side of the table, and we go back and forth. The scenarios aren't like that. The scenarios say, okay, you've got a guy in this town here, and his Americans are coming on the table here, and then on turn three, he's got a tank or two coming in from back here, and then on turn four, he's got a paratrooper drop that lands here, and then, yeah, so... Uh, the scenarios are written in a way that it kind of like gives you that actual battlefield feel to it. Um, have I played any of these scenarios using bolt action? The answer is no. I, that's why I want to play test one of them tonight. I'm going to do it solitaire. I'm going to do it by myself. I'm going to set up the easy escape. It's supposed to be a night battle. That's cool. It's supposed to be a paratrooper drop. That's cool. And the, the Germans are unprepared. That's cool, too. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, okay, so final thoughts is I've now become a warlord fanatic. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, every, I'm selling a bunch of stuff on eBay. If you want to buy it, buy it on eBay. Shop it if you like it. If you don't want it, no, whatever. Hell with you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you if you pick them up, you're helping me support my Warlord games habit. Am I considering getting into a couple of other Warlord games? Believe it or not, yes. I downloaded the free rules for Test of Honor. That's their Samurai game. Uh, am I into Samurai? Yes. Do I have like one, two, three... Where's my other one? Oh, four. I got like four samurai swords over there. <laughs> Are
Are they sharp? Yes. <laughs> okay, but we won't get into that. Um, I have a hankering to play some Samurai vs. Samurai. Ronin. Why? Because I could easily turn that into miniatures for Legend of the Five Rings. Because that's a miniature, that's a role-playing game that I play. So, uh, would that be cool? Hell yeah. Do they have 28mm uh, or uh, Japanese buildings? Yes! I'm so turned on. Okay, so I downloaded the Test of Honor rules because it's free or it's a it's like a trial rule thing. But I'm going to read it. I'm going to see if I like it. And if I do, guess what I'm ordering? I'm going to order one. I'm going to test it out, do a review on it, let you guys know. So, bolt action. Loving it so far. I played a couple of games of it in 20mm. Haven't done 28 yet, but I played a bunch of 20mm 20, 20 games. Loved it. That's why I was willing to commit to 28s. Hail Caesar, hasn't, haven't played it, but based on all the videos that I've seen from other people that have done some playthroughs, seems pretty sexy. Black Powder, apparently, those are the same rules as Hail Caesar. Uh, I think Black Powder came out first, but uh, I could be wrong. Um, it's going to be my one-stop shop for my American War of Independence and my Napoleonics. That way I don't have to learn two sets of rules, or have two sets of rules. Uh, all 28s. My, oh, I gotta do build some terrain. I gotta build some roads, because all my roads are too small. I gotta build a bridge, because it's too small. I gotta build a couple more buildings, because I just don't have enough 28 millimeter buildings. Um, and I like to build them in a way where I can share them across genres. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's kind of like the channel update. So I appreciate you guys coming out and checking out this video and sticking it out. And um, I'll see you next month. But I'll see you before that doing my video reviews. And I hope my snow-covered Americans get finished soon. I'm waiting for my glue to dry.